All right. I was born. I was born ready, baby. I know. You're one of those people. An athlete straight out of the box. Mm. Nice burp. <laughs> it was... I don't know if it's because I drank a bunch of water. I haven't even had a drink of beer. Um, but yeah, I felt it brewing. It's been a while since we've had a beer on the podcast. It's mm. true. It's because we're doing this late. Uh, today got away from us. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. And today <laughs> we had so noisy things. You might even still hear it because it's still happening. It's exciting, yet it is uh, putting a cramp it's 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 cramping our style we're having a it's not cramping my style i don't have to poop in the yard i know it's cramping roxy's, roxy's style, style. <laughs> but we are building a studio on top of our garage and the demolition slash framing has begun and so i also have my things in did you hear that you look yes. at my mouth i've it's got like, my invisible my invisalign i have a filter it'll take all that out oh I amazing won't even know. Now, if I only had a filter for real life. Do you want to explain what you're doing? Um, I am straightening my teeth. So, well, let me finish what happened and then I'll talk about that. So anyway, they're doing that and the demolition slash framing has, it's just a lot of when they throw things into the dumpster, it's been a lot. And so we were like, oh, I don't think we can film right now. And I don't think we film now. And like, so here we are. And this is our last, it's our last chance. Yeah, it's going to be fine. They teeth, won't even hear that. No, but my teeth um, have been slowly getting crooked. Right. So your teeth. They are started all taking money from people to do bad things. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my bottom teeth started overlapping, and that was actually why I had asked our new dentist here. I was like, "Hey," because our dentist in Santa Monica said you're at the point where you either need to do something about it, or we'll give you a retainer to hold it where it is and i was like what and then i looked in the mirror and i was like well i don't like it where it is so we gotta do something but we were about to move and my top my two front teeth all i want for christmas is my two front teeth they have always stuck out a little bit but it was never anything really to whatever um anyway so i got clear correct which is like an invisalign type thing but it's made here in texas they even it's like just 20 minutes away from where we live is where it's made i think which I kind of like. Anyway, so I have these retainers. And I love being able to shop local. That's one of the best things about Texas is that local. you can get whatever you need. They make it typically in Texas. It's a huge state. Yeah. Huge. So that's a Invisalign Texas style. Ching. Howdy. H howdy. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm on week two. All right. And I have, it said, I thought they said it could be six to nine months, but when I picked up my first round of them they gave me three weeks worth and then i have another appointment to see how it's going it said one through three out of 12 and i was like is it only four months <laughs> wow. magical very cool mm -hmm. anyway modern it orthodontics it's it gives a, me a little lisp because hmm. i haven't quite got, gotten used to them yet it's okay so anyway i had to take them out for aka because it was real bad <laughs> i was like therapist there's too many words psychology Welcome to another episode of oh, Opinions That Don't Matter. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm Katie. And we are here to chat about things that you probably don't know about or you know about. You know and you more might not about even care about that much, but you know what? Yeah. It Actually, matters to us. Welcome to another episode of Texas Preppers with Sean and Ooh, Katie. Okay, tell us. We have guns. We have canned food. Well, mostly jalapenos, but True. they're canned. Uh, My, we have a lot of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. We overpurchased the wet ones, so we're stocked up for two not years. Real, well, <laughs> uh, it said order one, and I was like, oh, I want two. Well, one was a pack of five, uh -huh. and I did not realize. So we got a pack of ten. So we did, but we we burned through like a bunch of them already. We're almost through our pack Once of Once you, uh, as a, a grown man, wipe your, uh, with a, a wet wipe, mm -hmm. um, you, you can't go back. You can't? No, this is like, oh, oh. Oh, it's so much delightful. cleaner. So yeah. nice. Yeah. Instead of like me hoisting my butt over the sink and hitting myself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could get a bidet. I would love to get a bidet. When we redo the bathrooms at some point, we'll get a bidet. Oh, that's the dream. The live in the dream. I don't even care about a house or a yard. Just a bidet. Christina, a Christina has a toilet and it's got like 15 buttons down the side. She's like, I want you to try them all. And I was like, that sounds very Definitely. Intense. Like when you're getting in an elevator, you just swipe all the buttons mm -hmm. as a kid. 
Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. You get the hair dryer, you get the uh, the sprayer, you get the floss, you get the. But I poked a button and nothing happened. And I don't know if I had to turn it on. And then I was like, I'm already done. Let's just wipe and get out of here. <laughs> wonder if it just one of the buttons just makes satisfying noises like. Mm, <sighs> you're so. Mm. Oh, relaxation. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what do you need 15 buttons for? I don't know. Temperature control. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Need to, if it's too hot, I don't want sweaty buns. I want to cool it down. Fresh uh, buns. Fresh only. buns only. So just that's warm. a setting. From the bakery, just mm-hmm, warm. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is there? What other settings could you imagine? I don't really want to talk more about bidets. A TV remote control maybe mm. built in? I mean, we, like we both, Christina and myself, just have like a toilet room. What if you so pressed if a you button put, and a sandwich came out? <laughs> no, I don't need to put into my body as I take out simultaneously. Also, eating in the toilet sounds really gross. But if there was a TV, it'd be way too close. Like in the toilet room, both of us have hers. The door that you come through, open, it closes right into your face. It's like it'd be, I don't know, like three feet. From That's them. a poor design. You need to have a bathroom that is so far away from anywhere. You need all that room for your toilet? No, to as a noise barrier, just to like, oh. so no one can know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's your problem. I don't really worry so much about that. But Katie, we are preppers. Mm-hmm. I've, uh, are we? Okay. Yeah, well, we're, we're more like preppy preppers. But Well, I finally have a little space to buy things in bulk, which is cheaper. Right. Because as an apartment person, I didn't have anywhere to put anything. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, I just have to pay more because I don't have room for this Costco size toilet mm. paper extravaganza. Right. You know? Well, uh, I think we've talked about that we were getting a generator installed. I think we did. So oh, that's, you Roxy's know. Roxy's excited. Prepper level mm-hmm. midnight, you know, you're you're pretty far Prep along if you're getting midnight. a generator. But because we, you know, in all honesty, it's because we work from home, so we need to make sure that uh, in the event of another tornado or whatever, Ice snowstorm, storm or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, you know, the power doesn't go down because we can't afford it, right? Yeah. To, well, so, then, our hard drives could get ruined through spikes and whatevers and downs and, and we can't work. Right. So, so we ordered a generator, mm-hmm. which is not the cheapest adventure to go on. No. And it's very scary when you don't get a phone call back from the generator company. And you'd given them your monies that you'd saved. Yeah. Not all of our monies. I, I, I learned the trick. You only give them some of your monies so they'll come back for the rest you of have the monies. To 50% up, up front, 50% upon delivery. Uh, upon completion, like a mm-hmm. sign off by the, the city. Mm-hmm on the permit not on the permit sorry on the uh, inspection mm-hmm. and then they'll fill in the trench where mm-hmm. the the pipe went in okay and then once are we we're satisfied at that stage then we're almost at that stage however something happened yesterday i didn't want to say it to you because at first i was like are you kidding me so <laughs> uh. ladies and gentlemen we're going to get katie's live reaction mm. to a situation that has developed as of yesterday spoilers now, i don't really react that strongly the deal is that I really liked our, our salesperson. Here's the deal. I thought we were going to be best friends. Well, I we, thought we were going to go hunting together. Yep. And we also decided to go with like a mom and pop. And he had driven like over an hour to m- meet with us. And I just was like, hey, let's give this guy our business. He was super nice. Mm-hmm. and Really liked him. Yep. But drove over an hour away from a company. And I, I thought the website was a little off. Mm-hmm. A little suspect and anyways then we once we made the down payment and it's typical for salespeople to promise the world and then you know the the company is left with having to deliver on it mm-hmm. and he said look it's gonna be four to six weeks ends up being a little bit more at but the we know day, things are things are delayed these days so no sweat man okay i'm good with it just communicate mm-hmm. if there's going to Talk be an issue to me digame as they say in espanol oh is it digame mm-hmm. i thought it was pigame with a p no d Oh, well, there you go. I've been saying it wrong all this time. I thought everyone else was wrong, but I was like, pig at me. <laughs> and they were like, I don't even know what that means in Spanish. Sean always makes up these words and then I'm like, it could mean something, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'm not that advanced. So anyways, our salesperson, very nice person. Uh, he, he promised the world slightly late on the delivery, not the end of the world mm-hmm. because we didn't lose power. So yeah, we're okay. Okay. But finally, the product was delivered and it was installed this week. Super stoked about it. We tested it. It ran. Mm-hmm. Everything's awesome. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. And then I asked about the winterization kit. Yep. And they said, oh, it's actually back ordered. And when it comes in, then we'll install it. Oh, okay. It. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Because we were like, we paid extra for this winterization kit. And yeah. then uh, Don de Esta right. said winter. It's, it's basically like a little blanket that heats up the oil. Yeah. And make sure it doesn't freeze so that yeah. you can it will run. Totally fine. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to give them a hassle about that. I'm all It's smiles. also summertime. Thanks, well, it's spring. So. But then 
the evening that they installed it, they left and and uh, I received a text message from our sales op- uh, person. Mm-hmm. And I'd like you to read this. Oh, okay. Uh, but just leave out any names. Mm-hmm. You know, like don't don't say the company name or the. Oh, he doesn't work re- for them anymore. Have to read oh, it. howdy. I appreciate that. Howdy, salesperson. I don't work for this company anymore. This person has filed for bankruptcy and the owner is drug addicted. And I'm telling all customers that have bought from this company, get your money back because it will be a lot of trouble with this company. No. Please go with a different company because they will not fulfill your needs as a generator company. They don't answer phones, don't reply to any messages, and they will leave you high and dry. Roxy just found out. Now she's, she's pissed. She's expressing for us our... <laughs> but I thought it was his father-in-law. I don't know what the uh, what the deal is here, but I got that after they installed it and I was like, ah, oh, well, at least I have the product yeah we've and gotten it it seems like it's plumbed it seems like they did a good job with the electricity our, our, they put our power out for a while i heard them zzz, zzz, you know right. doing their thing so at least we have this mm-hmm. but man i was really bummed to get that i knew there was something off with what was going on. i knew it mainly because you told me you're like sean there's something off i was like what i don't know if i said that yeah, did you, i you said, oh sometimes this is I taking do. too long you should email them so i emailed them and i didn't hear back i was like dang it we got snookered and uh but they delivered it, yeah, and, and it was and brand they new. Installed it, and it came out of the box. And the it Generac, worked. it was all good. Yeah. So, anyways, what a awful text to get. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, I do have some reaction to that. I guess usually Sean will say like, "I didn't want to tell you," and then I'm like, "Well, what are we gonna do?" Like, it's I don't really react. Like, oh my god, I'm just not that person. It was significant. The reason why I went with them is when it was a mom and pop shop. Two, I thought their salesperson was nicer. Yeah. And three, it was significantly cheaper did to you go reply to that no not yet because what am i going to say i wish you told me sooner <laughs> yeah you know i, I i'll just say here. thanks for the heads up yeah say they just installed it yeah. I, we could probably get like an inspector to come well to check it the out the city does the city will come inspect the work oh perfect so then, then we'll then make sure it's okay it. yeah then we're exactly. good but i was if i had received this text message like a month prior ago. to it being delivered i would have been like in panic mode mm-hmm. we've been fleeced yeah you sons of bitches <laughs> where's the fleecing policing you know? <laughs> i thought so anyways yeah. but i think we'll be fine mm-hmm. okay so i have puppy parlance i guess we can get into that um the other day because we had the people coming to de- demolish our roof of our garage and all this stuff was happening and um and my mom and larry are here with her little dog and as i've said before on instagram a zillion times they do not get along charlotte is thir- 12 12 roxy's not even one and they are at very different life stages and Roxy's just sure if she boops her one more time, she'll play. That's like taking an 11 year old. <laughs> and, no, not even an 11 year no. old, like a seven like year a old. six year old. Well, seven years well, seven. to dog six, number seven. six, yeah. seven. Yeah, seven years. Mm-hmm. Taking a seven year old and dropping it off at uh, an old folks home. Yeah, Charlotte 85. Being, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and just letting the teenager run loose. Like they're gonna pester that Mm-hmm. Uh, grandparent for candy, you know. Mm-hmm. You got candy, candy, candy. <laughs> or they're like, want to play? Want to play? Yeah, okay. uh, Grandma, look at what, I, Grandma, Grandma, <laughs> Grandma. It's like that, uh, Mom, Mommy, Mom, Mom. Yeah. This uh, Stewie from the Family Guy. Anyway, so she keeps booping her with her nose. <laughs> She's just sure she wants to play with her. Now, we have heard from Roxy's daycare that she will insist on playing with some dogs. And even if they don't want to play anymore, she like won't give up. Then they have to remove her from the group because they're afraid it's going to cause a fight. And I appreciate that now. At the time, I was like, I think you're overreacting. She's a puppy. That's what puppies do. But seeing her interact with Charlotte and like just not leave her alone, she's a little better right now. I don't know why um knock on wood that it's okay but anyway um it's just been a lot and so we took her to daycare yesterday because there's just too much going on at the house and i was like it's gonna be better for her she'll get to get her jollies out play with all her friends see like i said play with all her friends get all her jollies out she's a green um (laughs) she's quite the howler lately anyway um then you were told when you went to pick her up don't bring your dog back here She's a menace to society. No. To all dogs. The, actually, what the lady said is, some dogs go to heaven. <laughs> Yours is not going That's to. That's not what she said. Tell us what she said. <laughs> now she said, if you could just bring her on Fridays and Mondays only, because those days, 
I guess the new puppy squad because mm-hmm. Roxy's hitting one years old, so she's aging out of this group. She's bigger than the others, and they're too little for yeah, her. Yeah, so she she likes to play aggressively, uh, and, and I get it. You know, she's so. also fifty pounds. She's not like a, a twenty pound dog. No, she's yoked. She's all muscle, and she's but she's also not like a. Although Great Danes are super gentle, she's just energetic, muscular, and really throws her weight behind her play. Because when we play with her and she'll like play tug of war, she could like I feel like she's going to jerk my arm out of its socket. Yeah. And she's a medium sized dog, a fifty pounder, uh-huh. and yoked all in the neck. <laughs> she's her legs are not long, but they are strong. <laughs> she's like a little Bulgarian lady, you know. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. I don't know. All what, our Bulgarian people are offended. Yeah, I don't know what Bulgarians look like. I don't either. I should, I, I should take that back. Based on what I know about El Salvadorian people and my good friend Rocio. Short legs. Yeah, they're not chubby, but they're short. Hmm, so okay. she's at least somewhat like that. And she's not chubby either, Roxy. She's like, yeah, you know? Um, anyway, so now we can only bring her on Mondays and Fridays. And it's fine. But we've gotten all sorts of mixed messages about it over the years. We've had people say, oh, bring her on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Those are less busy days. Then I called and said, oh, you know, we're hoping we can bring her in on a Tuesday or some other day. But I know that it's extra busy. Can I put her in this special group? Because they said I can like upgrade her to the special group. Oh, no, no, we have time for her. And then then they're fine. No problem. We pick her up, blah, blah, blah. Then, you know, so I think... I always call ahead of time because I always say she's very energetic and, and very spirited. Oh, no, they know. And they've got all sorts of dogs. When I was mm-hmm. picking her up, two maniacs came flying. I mean, <laughs> when I say flying. Mm-hmm. That makes me feel good about our dog because. It was nuts. I and the feel lady like, couldn't control them. Ooh. And she had both feet out. Her he- It was like mm-hmm. something out of an Archie cartoon. Both yeah. feet were like her heels. as She was skidding through the. And, and they were just excited to see their, their, their mama, dad. Their dad, no. yeah. And the dad couldn't have been more of a big teddy bear a big teddy bear but like he was mr tough guy military spec sunglasses buzz cut he had the big truck you know mm-hmm. that he, he was a tall guy and his truck was so big that he had to like jump out Climb and out jump it. down a couple of stairs and then use a, a rope ladder to get mm-hmm. the rest of the way down I it was exactly one of those pickup trucks mm-hmm. and the two dogs that he had while they were very strong and, and pulling and making the lady skid on her heels they couldn't have been more than 10 pounds so dogs oh, they were little dogs they were little but their legs were strong you know, the and, dogs, they were and the energy pulling the pulling you know, four wheel drive and the girl isn't, you know, she's like five feet tall. And yeah. And a lot of them are like, uh, well, I don't know if that's now, but they had a ton of interns that they just brought oh, yeah. in. And so I think she's one of the they're interns like who's made it. The, OK, because there was I thought it was an intern when I dropped her off mm-hmm. there because she was all like bright eyed and bushy tailed. Do you know what they do with the interns who aren't good? They don't get a job. Just like on the Tiger King, they grind them up into food. <laughs> Why would you say that? Because that's what they do. That's terrible. That's why your dog likes <laughs> a <laughs> good stick. <laughs> um, but whenever I see a dog like that, and then I see Roxy kind of like, huh, huh, and she comes out excited and she kind of pulls, but she's yeah. not that big of a maniac. I'm like, oh, she's okay. There was a big dog there and it was like regular age. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was a puppy. I don't think it was a, an old dog, but it was peeing on itself. And I was like, it's it's failed, oh. you know, the basics. We have to pause. They're knocking on the back door. Oh. Apologies for the interruption or intermission or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Roxy got loose uh, and we had to run quickly to try to catch her. And luckily she likes people. So she wasn't really trying to escape so much as uh, see everybody and say hi. I had to run out in the front in my slippers. And then one of the guys that was coming off our roof from the demolition was like, don't worry, ma'am. We got her. I was like, he already knew what I was coming out for. Because I came out like looking for her on the street because people were leaving. So I was I was like, don't hit my dog. Ah. But it was okay. Awesome. A little bit of a drama, but you know, we're okay. Okay, great. So that was what happened. I don't remember what we were talking about. So, oh, okay. Uh, my bad. I have an update about the podcast. Oh, okay. Yes. Our rankings. Oh, on- we were talking about, sorry. We were talking about the drug dealer person who put our generator in. That's oh, and yeah. Then, I don't know. If, oh, and then we were talking about TVs and the and the toilets. And remember? Sitting in the toilet room with the bidet. Yeah. Puppy parlance about <clears> her <throat> being in trouble. It's all coming back to me. It's all coming back to me now. But we can move on. What was your thing? Where Go do you want to start? What do you want to do? Go for it. Oh, okay. Read your thing. We're burning up the charts. Burning, burning, burning up the charts. On fire. On Apple. 
Pets, you too. Namibia has shown up. We're number four in Namibia for Are you sure you're popular. Saying that right? What is that? Na- Namibia. <laughs> Is it in Africa or something? Yeah, it's right next to South Africa. Oh, cool. In Botswana. Uh, I did not know anything about it before. I I knew the name. The name's familiar enough for me to kind of know where it was, but Mm -hmm. not enough for me. It wasn't even, I didn't even know where it was. I was like, (laughs) uh, thank you. (laughs) Namibia, Namibia. Namibia. I'm excited though. Okay, so I had to look it up because I'm curious. Where Mm -hmm. is it? What is it? Uh, Namibia is. (laughs) Say that one time fast. Yes. Um, so we're heating up the charts mm-hmm. in Namibia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello to everyone in Namibia. Mm-hmm. In truth, I don't know much about you, but seeing as how we're in the top 10 podcast, number four actually last week. Maybe one of our people in South Africa is on vacation. Um, so I thought I'd do some research. Mm-hmm. It is a country in Southwest Africa. Mm-hmm. It's distinguished by the Namib. <laughs> those those, uh, those sounds don't really want to come out of my nose. <laughs> Namib a Desert along its Atlantic coast. So it's on the Atlantic on coast, the coast of, of okay. Africa, right next to South Africa. Uh-huh. The country is home to diverse wildlife, including a significant cheetah population. Ooh. Ah, cheetahs. I like them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Their capulation, Jesus. The capital, Windhoek, and coastal town, Swakopmund. <laughs> the P is silent. I'm yes. <laughs> I think that uh, Namibia, also uh, shares a lot with um, the Pacific Northwest and how they spell things, you know. It's like, oh, maybe they have a big indigenous uh, population. Well, I would assume they do. And so uh, the coastal town Swakopmund, uh, it, it's a uh, German colonial era buildings mm-hmm. such as Windhoek's Christenkirch, which I'm just <laughs> now you know how I feel. The name, but that was built in 1907. Mm. In the north, Estosha. National Park's mm. salt pan draws game, including rhinoceroses <gasps> and giraffes. Wow. Now, Sean loves a giraffe. I love giraffes. That's my favorite creature. I don't know if it... Creature? <laughs> I can't speak today. That's a critter. Creature? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. My tongue was getting ahead of my head, you know, and it's like rolling. I hate when that happens. Yeah. Anyways, I'm very excited about it. Mm-hmm. I even looked up who the president was and how many people live there. Oh, it's there. a democracy? I don't know. Um, sometimes presidents are not the yeah, best that's what people, I wondered. but I think it is a democracy. Yeah. I believe it's a breakaway of South Africa. So okay. South Africa gained their independence um, at some point, point. Okay. and then um, they had apartheid. Mm-hmm. But I think in the 1990s, what's apartheid? Um, apartheid was uh, a class or a a racial. Let me look up. Yeah, but let me try it. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a racial system where um, South Africa treated blacks and whites differently. In South Africa, a policy or system of segregation or discrimination on the grounds of race, a gender apartheid. Yeah. And so I think it was basically white people who were Dutch and British immigrants um, who had settled in South Africa mm-hmm. at one point. And they're the Boers, I believe. Those are the Dutch uh, settlers. Anyways, they they ruled with an iron fist for a very long time with race racial policies you know mm-hmm. and finally the shackles of that were thrown off and um there Just was a bug I'm oh, sorry that's okay I don't really know that much about how South Africa broke down. I like that you were still just trying to figure all this. <laughs> well, yeah, basically apartheid was really bad, and the of world shame them. Of course, it's terrible. For shame, it. shame! You can't do this. The shame monster comes and maybe likes big mouth as much as I do. But then when they got shame. rid of apartheid, okay, perfect. Then, Amazing. yeah, my favorite uh, rugby team was able to play on the world's level, and mm. so it, you'd heard rumors about how good they were. And, then and you got to see them. I got to see them. I was so Amazing. excited. Yeah. Anyway, so they have 2.5 million people in Namibia. Wow. So Namibia is not South Africa, but it's right next door. Mm -hmm. It's a blend of many different people and its cultures and customs have absorbed both African and European elements and fused them into a blend of the two. Cool. Sounds pretty awesome. Um, Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's 25 hours away by plane. Wow. So that's kind of. That's like, I remember when uh, Dodie, who's a YouTube creator and she lives in London, met us in Australia for. VidCon Australia and the way that they had to get there because it was a set we were in LA and it was still a 17 hour flight right but she had to fly through Dubai had a layover in Dubai essentially went uh, it's almost like together we almost went around the world do you know what I mean because she went one way we went the other you know hands around the globe yeah I don't know what 
what song, song should song. go along with that. But <laughs> um, anyway, it was pretty crazy. And I was like, wow, the world is so small yet so big at the same time. Yeah, it's it's pretty Sup- big. Super cool, dude. Yeah. Anyway. So big that there's one man who is wealthier than everyone else. Oh, his name is Elon, Elon Musk. And Twitter. I've always hated Twitter, so if he can make it better, cool. Yeah, it really doesn't bother me one way or the other what happens to Twitter. I don't really plan on any. If someone pulled the plug at Twitter mm-hmm. and all the code disappeared and everyone's accounts disappeared. I'd be this much affected. If yeah, and I think the world would be a better place. A big, uh, goose egg. So either we scrap Twitter as it is now mm-hmm. or you give it over to the very rich man. And let's see what he can do. I know. Uh, they <laughs> fucked it up. What can you do? Right. Because it'll still be a place of trolling because that's like essentially how Twitter works. I just don't understand. Although I do have to be honest the other day because I'm addicted to the Johnny Depp Amber Heard. Not addicted. That's a strong word. I'm interested in the case. Not because I really care the outcome. I find I find Johnny Depp to be so interesting because he's been like so super rich for so long. I'm like, he's out of his cave. What is he doing? Well, that How does he speak? It's interesting because he he's an actor, mm-hmm. very gifted actor. We know this. Mm-hmm. Extremely charismatic and is used to being at the center of attention. Yeah. And not only at the center of attention, but there's very few people in the world who can tell him no. It's like Prince. Prince. Or Michael Jackson. Yeah, you reach you a You get away level. with a lot of shit. You, you, someone disagrees with you, you turf them. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they can't hang out anymore. Or you throw them in the, in the well or whatever you do with the, the, the well. You know, no, throw them over your fence into the moat and the alligators get them. Oh, no, Um, no. Anyways, when I was wanting to find out. Is Roxy in the house? No, she's outside with them with the gate closed. Okay. It's okay. They'll calm down. Um, When I was looking to find out what happened with the case, I turned to Twitter because it's going to be the most up to date. And I just searched Johnny Depp. And sure enough, like the four most popular hashtags showed up and I was like, Hmm. I didn't want to pick because some are like well, most of them are for Johnny Depp because I mean who has even heard pun intended of Amber Heard nobody before this you heard I had to look up who the fuck she was because he was like suing her for millions of dollars I'm like does she even have millions of dollars uh no she doesn't anyway she's like a little actress kind of in air quotes I'm not sure she's been in a couple things and I don't remember her from anything but anyway I clicked on the trial hashtag and caught up on like what had been said there were clips people put out there now would i call that necessary no will i call would i call twitter uh give, giving anything to my life no do i use it for anything important no some people do use it for main modes of communication especially in nations where perhaps you know you you, you have to get a message out you know in time yeah, it's of almost war. like the sos yeah and so it's such a compact little packet of information mm-hmm. that you can get out into the world if, you know in dire situations it's it's good for that but for yeah. the trolling i don't really care for it yeah and i just find if i get into twitter uh i mean and did you troll amber or johnny did you no. say anything no but i and i didn't want to take any stances because i don't know right. like i don't know i don't know these people i don't only the only people who know what happened in their relationship is him and her and i think they're both lying but you know it's it's like they got divorced there also, like, their memory your memory does yeah, not like, serve you well. And during the the period when whatever was going on, he was in the like detoxing from uh, opioids. And anyway, um, and I felt for the guy because like that's a hard thing to do. And everybody's telling you yes, so nobody's holding you accountable. He's also abused as a kid, and it's it's, it's shitty. I'm not saying his life is shitty. I'm just saying things happen to him, and he's just as human as I am, even though he has like you know buttloads of cash. But without uh without taking sides there were some i find the urge i do this on tiktok too where like i just want to like the the comments that are funny i'm like oh that's a good one zinger but i was like don't leave your little paw prints because then people are going to be assume that you're on one side or the other when i just think that person was clever oh yeah you know well i feel bad for him i feel bad for anyone who has to have their life publicly examined i find it odd that a trial it's of like that the OJ nature trial. yeah but so if it's a civil trial mm-hmm. they can televise it mm-hmm. but if it's a criminal trial they can't have cameras in the courtroom i'm like yeah. so when is a circus i don't understand the legal system why they would allow that because so you're basically taking this guy i think because there's no criminal charges being filed yeah but what benefit who benefits from this except for 
all the like TMZs and gossip it's hounds on, like, out there. It's on like all news. It's, it's crazy. Brutal. And I feel, I really Not feel. all the time, but they'll do like clips of it and like comment on it. And I'm like, do I really care what you think? No. From a bird's eye standpoint, looking down at their, their trial, I feel bad. I don't care if someone's wealthy mm-hmm. or famous or whatever, that, that they're being picked apart by in the media and, and people are examining all sorts of minutia. And then they have to recall in the moment someone says okay mm-hmm. so on uh where were you january where 14th were you? On 2015. you were on a plane and uh you were drinking a lot can you tell us about that first of all who you know mm-hmm. who is this person asking these questions and which plane where was i going what do you mean Give- by drink a lot mm-hmm. like that's that's your account what's of it, a lot but, right and and maybe he was drinking a lot maybe he doesn't remember mm-hmm. but the the fact that you have to re- recall Recount all this all information is, is really and stuff that's probably very difficult your life was falling apart yeah well and i did a TikTok about it because <coughs> sorry are you gonna be okay yeah <clears throat> you need a get my mafioso voice going i know do you need a second what happened <clears throat> it's just that dry throat are it happens every once in a while water? no it'll be fine well i even did a TikTok about what's happening not because i'm taking sides or anything but johnny depp perfectly describes a gaslighting situation if that's what happened right allegedly he's alleging that she would say these things to him like horrible things and she's alleging that she would say that to him he is alleging okay that amber like would come home in fits of rage or get mad about something and say a bunch of horrible things to him and then the next day or later in the evening he'd be like hey it really hurt my me when you said i'm a bad father or uh, that I'm an alcoholic or a drunk or a druggie or a loser or whatever. Cause she like really from his perspective, like was always like emotionally abusing him. And, and he was like, but she, then she would say, that's not what happened. And he's like, so once I ask, can I record you? Because tomorrow you're going to tell me this didn't happen. Oh, that's how all the recordings came about. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Because there's all, there's mm-hmm. documentation of mm-hmm. audio recordings of her just losing her mind, like mm-hmm. her Mel Gibbs, Gibsoning him. And I don't know if, because one of them, he said, I don't know all the recordings, but he's recalling one where he asked her if she could be recorded because he's like, you're going to tell me that this didn't happen. And I don't, I want you to be able to listen to what you're saying to the person that you supposedly love. And so anyway long story short i made a TikTok about it because that is gaslighting like what's happening to him if that's what happened but that what he's expressing and talking about is gaslighting if you have something happen to you and then someone tells you that's not what happened but you know that that's what happened and i know there's like small instances where you're like i took the trash out no i took the trash out you remember it wrong that's not ga- gaslighting is when but she erases or he says that she's erasing the abuse. Yeah, she's pretending it didn't happen. By saying that's not what happened. And you're drunk, you're a druggie, you don't remember. Right. That's where it's gaslighting. Because gaslighting is a form of manipulation where someone will twist what happened to their favor. It's done a lot by narcissists. Also, um, just people who could be hurtful and toxic in relationships, they might not have full-blown narcissism. But they'll do it as a way to erase the history of certain things to make them look good and you look bad and to manipulate the situation so so much so that you start to question your own like saneness because that's what he's like and then i would feel crazy like i know that happened yeah so at the end of the day it's it's difficult to watch like i haven't caught much of it maybe about five minutes because i i really liked him when i was younger i watched a lot of his films i love johnny depp he, you edward know, scissor hands cry baby when i was a greaser you know that was <laughs> what's eating gilbert grape oh yeah oh no that's leonardo oh he's in, he's, that he's in that too leonardo and him yeah so you know there is public curiosity like what what you know what's going on and you get to see this person Wasn't as 21 much as, jump street his main his like breakthrough his, that's how he did tv or how oh. he got through on tv mm-hmm yeah anyway such a talented man but you know typically the only aspect you see of a celebrity is what they are willing to show you mm-hmm. previous to the internet <clears throat> you know there was all these filters there was agents lawyers uh pr mm-hmm. uh or pr agents you know mm-hmm. but basically until you got to the celebrity and then what you really saw was just what was on the the, the silver screen or, yeah or like what they said in interviews in when their publicist set up 
things for whatever you know movie or show was coming out or book or whatever and so it was very curated and it's very private and i actually am kind of jealous of that part of traditional celebrity because on the internet everybody like demands to know things not sure you know and so a lot of celebrities who maybe are narcissists play into it, lean into it and they mm-hmm. really lap it up like all the attention and mm-hmm. and, and social media and he is could be that way i don't really know him that well i don't think he is i think he's, he he's really interested in being a, an actor or being recognized an as an artist, artist. so mm-hmm. he, when he talks he's a little uh oh out there you know maybe his vernacular was impressive yes the language he used i was like wow it's like i'm back in school right. um but the the one thing i'm just and i'll wrap it up mm-hmm. with this is that he is on trial and he's not in control of the situation mm-hmm. wherein you know you're going to answer or i will give you questions that you're supposed to answer and you don't get to see a celebrity under the microscope that way where they're they have to adhere to rules yeah so and he has to talk about things that you're like oh, that's his like private personal life yeah. like like Anyways, talk- I, I opted yeah. out of it. I, I watched about five minutes. I was like, oh, man. I feel bad for him. But um, but anyway. If if, if it, he did the things. And I don't know. I mean. <laughs> if she did the things. Yeah. Again, you know, it's like all alleged and I'm not there through. But they're both actors and actresses. So who knows? But whoever that happened to, if this if this happened to him in the way that he's saying, that fucking sucks. And I feel for the guy. Yeah. Whether you're rich, poor. Um, famous, not famous, whatever. If you're in an abusive relationship. Yeah, it's horrible. Especially since he grew up in an abusive thing. You're like, ooh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And anyway. then and then he lost his full career. Uh-huh. He was uh, tossed out of Hollywood, for lack of a better description. He couldn't get work. Mm-hmm. And then he retreated into music. And he has uh, the Hollywood Vampires, as well, uh, I think his band. Well, Joe yeah. Perry, he and a couple other people. <laughs> and there's like some, I don't know if it's a. Alice Cooper, maybe. I think so. But it was just funny to me because in my mind, I'm like, how fucking cool to have those people at your house. Oh my God. Like, what? Not that I'm Amber Heard and she's, you know, she doesn't come across very kind or warm on TV. So I'm always like, oh, she looks so cold. But there's either, I don't know if it's a text or recording of her saying that she didn't like hanging out at Johnny's house because it's just a bunch of old men playing guitars. And I'm like, what? (laughs) I don't like uh, long guitar solos on shows and in music, but if Alice Cooper's at your house. Yeah, roll with it, you know. You're fucking hanging out. (laughs) Slash over, this is crazy. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) Who knows? She seems like an interesting person. uh, She seems like an asshole, but I don't know her. Yeah. Anyways, I'm not going to watch that trial. So throwing it off, I hope um, if anyone's really guilty of anything severe that they're 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 in trouble. Taken to task. Agreed. But should we get into some letters? Sure. I, mean, I think we should get into some more jovial. Let's pull ourselves out of the pit of despair. It wasn't a pit of despair. It's just what's in the news. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm it's curious. It's in the about news. It. Live. Oh, I'm already excited. Are you ready? Sure. First letters from Kim. Hi, Kim. And it is entitled Puppy Parlance. Okay. That's why I'm excited. It says, hello, OTDM, Sean and Katie. I'm Kim from Toronto, and this is my first time writing in. Oh. Welcome, welcome to OTDM. Another Toronto contributor. Mm-hmm. I'm not too sure what my, oh, I just accidentally clicked out of it. I'm not too sure what my dog Maya identifies as. One minute, she could be part cat, part bird, part guard lion. The next, she could be a human or an alarm clock. She is a Chihuahua pug Pomeranian mix. That's fun. When we got her as a puppy, oh good, there's pictures. I was like, please let there be pictures. When we got her as a puppy, her siblings were all dogs, cats, and parrots with fleas. Yuck. Because she was a puppy. She basically has a lion's mane, the Pomeranian in her, very foofy, and has the thickness of a pug, (laughs) but definitely has the trembles and the yapper of a chihuahua. Sometimes she paws her water and hunts and rolls on her toys like a kitty. Roxy kind of does that too, but in a very dog way, where she's like, she makes that noise. She can even flick her antlers and toys at us when we least expect it. Ouch. I've definitely gotten a ball or antler in the face a few times. Every time she hears people pass by or sees a dog, Roxy, on TV, she snaps. She gets triggered by the words, you wanna, or where's your dad, or look at that. Since I've been pregnant, she will paw and cry at me in the middle of the night for two hours before my actual alarm. I, I guess she's getting us ready for ready for when the baby comes. 
Whew. That's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. We've had Roxy in our bedroom in her crate. She's usually out in the living room, but since my mom gets up a little earlier than us, I didn't want my mom to have to deal with her, you know, because she's our baby. We're responsible. So we moved her into our bedroom, but homegirl makes a lot of noise. She does like mouth noises. I think she has a deviated septum. If she I had snores. to make a guess, she, she snorks, snores, and does a lot of cleaning of her palate, like like you were saying. Uh-huh. It's it's interesting. Yeah, and then she, I mean, she snores, and then last night, I don't know if you heard it, woke me. She barked in her sleep. Oh, I didn't hear that. She went. It's that funny. The dream boofs. Mm-hmm, the boof into the cheek, and then she moved around, and then she stopped, and I was like, oh, maybe she woke up. But it was funny because it woke me. And then a few minutes later, you got up to go pee. So I think it might have woke you. You just didn't realize. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, she makes a lot of noise. And I'm I'm like, I can't wait to put her back into the living room because it wakes me when she does stuff. Because I'm like, oh, is she okay? You know, does she need out? Huh. She almost always sleeps through the night, like 90% of the time. But there are those couple of times. We have armadillo parlance. Armadillo by morning. We'll get into that in a second. Okay back into this letter because i got off topic anyways i hope to hear more cute and funny pet stories on here also say hello to roxy for us will do so this oh my goodness <laughs> whoa <laughs> i love that's like before they're like hey. looks like a gymnast when they have puppy yeah. when their puppy runs you know when yeah. they do their little zoomies oh yes Aww. it's a cute dog super cute I wouldn't have known that it was nothing but a chihuahua not that a chihuahua is i can nothing, see the you know. pomeranian in oh, it okay only because the snout's a little bit bigger. I don't know. It's, and the hair's a little longer, but there's long hair chihuahuas. But she just knows what she is, and that's what she is, and she's adorable. I love it. Okay. Oh, let's do a little armadillo. Let's detour into armadillo land. Oh. Do you want to tell them? Well, apparently armadillos live in Texas. And Who knew? they carry leprosy and rabies. And they can this is of concern. We didn't want it in our yard. And we've noticed that there was an armadillo running the fence recently. And so, no, sorry, not an armadillo. What was that? Was a possum. The possum was running the fence. But I had heard from the neighbors that there are armadillos. Mm-hmm. And the way you identify them is you'll see little nose prints in the dirt mounds because they're looking for they grubs. Eat grubs and also. And we have seen those as we walk about uh, our community there's trees and if the if there's like fresh mulch there'll be a bunch of little indentations where Mm -hmm. they dig they root around with their nose Mm -hmm. and i thought oh that's that's kind of cute until it happens in your yard now we have leaves that are accumulating on the side of the house and then we notice that there are a bunch of indentations there so i think the leaves were creating a moist barrier mm -hmm. for the the grubs to show up now this critter all of a sudden we had runs you could kind of see like where underneath the fence it had dug it dug to get through all over there's like six different entry points and the fact that it dug so we'd had our pest people out to look at it before and he was like because there was something under the deck and roxy's going nuts and he was like it's a rat i'm pretty sure and so we put out these traps and we it stopped we didn't hear it anymore so i'm like oh i think it died now flash forward to about a month ago maybe we had those dig points and i was like hmm and then she was going nuts again. I know. I, I was out there in the backyard and I, you were like, what do these paw prints look like? I'm like, a critter? And then you're like, look, there's some scat. I, I no, tasted I, it. I was a scat man, like <laughs> that guy that we watched. Looks like you got an armadillo there. Catching the armadillo. Anyway, I did not touch any scat. I saw the dig points through and I told Sean, Mm, something's getting into our property and it's bigger than a rat because a rat could fit right here and it wouldn't have had to dig over there. And so I call the pest control again and I tell them, you know, we have these again. And the guy's like, well, what you got there, Mrs. An armadillo. And I'm like, oh, an armadillo. I'm like, what do I do with an armadillo? He's like, well, we don't like to kill nothing bigger than a rat. So we'll have to come out here and put some live traps and then we'll check them every day and we'll take care of it. I'm like, well, how much is that going to cost? And he's like, $200. And I'm like, no <laughs> will it kill me <laughs> anyway so we block up the holes put rocks there 
Oh, that reminds me, we've got to get rocks to block up another hole because there's yet another and we're out of rocks. So we put the rocks, we block it up and there's nothing for a little while. And we're like, that's okay. Then my mom and Larry come to town and I'm up in the morning at like nine, not even that early, out with them sitting on the porch. The dogs are running around. Roxy goes fucking nuts. Boom, out pops an armadillo. She chases it across the yard. I don't know what to do. I come out. I run behind Roxy because I don't want to touch the thing that might have leprosy or rabies. I don't know. I'm in my Crocs. I don't have any weapons or any gloves. So I'm chasing her. Then Charlotte decides to get in on it. But she's also scared of it. The armadillo has huge feet, probably the size of like, like a spatula. Two little spatulas. For his digging. What's that noise? I don't know, Katie. Anyway, armadillo has huge feet, like two little spatulas, and it like kicks, 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 kicks the dirt, trying to dig, and its little front feet, crazy. It was trying to dig under the fence, but luckily in that area, the dirt was very high and it couldn't get anywhere. And Roxy couldn't figure out how to hurt the thing. She like tried to bite at its neck, but the shell was there and she pawed it and then it would kick. And I was like, this is out of control. And then Charlotte's getting hit with dirt while she's running towards the thing. It was about five minutes of chaos until the thing got away from them, kind of. It wasn't very fast, but it, they couldn't get through its shell. And it ran up our deck down and through that last little hole that we didn't put uh, rocks in. And the dogs went fucking nuts. We had to bathe them all because they were covered in dirt and mud from head to toe. Charlotte looked like she took a dirt bath. <laughs> Long story short, if you encounter an armadillo, grab them by the tail and keep swinging them until you get away from your property and like fling them into a field or something. Because if you don't swing them, they will be able to curl up and as a last resort, they will bite you. Mm. They don't like to bite. They usually try to kick mm -hmm. and dig away, run away. That's, they're, they're like, they, they don't want to eat us or anything. But if you, if they feel in danger, they will bite. Okay. So anyways, that was my armadillo experience. <clears throat> so we, I called, coughed up the money, they put the live traps down. We, we caught, got them. We caught ourselves an armadillo. Honestly, it's kind of a cute critter. Awfully cute. I've never cute. seen one. And those little teeny ears. Yeah, little velvety pink ears. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to rub them like this. Had two different patterns on its shell. One mm -hmm. is like diamonds, diamonds are forever. forever. And the oh. other one's like an Art Deco design, which I thought that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I looked at him in the eye. Very trendy. And he looked at me and he was like, "Help!" Well, no, because Roxy was by me. And I think it was really nervous. Like it, of course. You know, there's a, a dog and now I'm trapped in a cage. But they came so quick to get it. When I woke up yeah. in, at like 8.30 and saw it out there, they were there by like 9. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny because he only had one cowboy boot on the day before. <laughs> and then when I saw him yesterday, he had two cowboy boots mm, on. So I one's think. One's kind of stripey. Yeah. He was like, ooh. <laughs> it was funny. JL, my literary agent, um, she was like, I feel like it. All, that would look good on a handbag or a shoe. And I was like, exactly. Um, don't always want to kill critters, but I don't know what to do with an armadillo. Like, I don't understand the point of an armadillo, but I don't know what we call this armadillo. Uh, Humanely ridding your property of armadillos. Armadillo That's, management. Right. So anyway, the last little thing was that the guy, the pest control guy who he's so nice. I really enjoy the people at our pest control. He, when I, he called me after he got it. And he was like, um, just wanted to let you know, ma'am, I got it off the property. That little bugger was smart. And also, what a big one. Now, I haven't seen any armadillos in my life. Put them on the screen. This is the only armadillo that I've seen. And he was like, wow, like it was a big one, I guess. I was like, thanks, question mark. Anyway, apparently he had put traps down. Now we went to Corpus Christi for the weekend. So he'd put the traps down. And when he came to buy on like Friday morning, there, the armadillo was in the backyard with his friends and they were barbecuing was in the trap. Oh, and when he went to because I guess he had to get he picked up one. He was going to grab the last one with it in. It pushed itself out. He's like that sneaky and it did it twice. So he went and got older traps that don't work the same way. And that's how they caught it. Mm. I was like, got to be smarter than the armadillo. So, and now I guess there's another armadillo next door that's much smaller, and I'm just hoping that we don't have to have it here. Who knows? The adventures of the armadillo continue. We'll keep you updated. We'll have to go buy some rocks. Yeah. If you have a recipe for armadillo soup. 
we don't no, want it we don't want it i don't i feel bad they're too cute also their little kicks yeah i wish i had video of it because it would like try to dig with its front paws and yeah. then as roxy get close it'd be like it curl up and go huh! that and toy like, that you'd have as a kid what? where you'd you'd swing it and the little the sticky foot which Oh, uh-huh. And you could grab a piece of paper. That's what an armadillo's foot looks like. Kind of. Not really. I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a human palm. Yeah. Really dark brown. Uh-huh. And like maybe if I cut my pinky off about that big and then it got wider at the top where it had its claws. Oh, it so was... like a spatula. I rest my case. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to um, Amelie's uh, letter. Is it Emily or Amelie? I forget. I always want to say Amelie. It's spelled really cool. So, yeah. Okay. It is entitled, Hi, I will be your sick sister for today. I wonder what that means. Let's get into it. Good morning, Katie, Sean, and OTDM minions. Oh, OTDM minions. Oh. I appreciate that. I hope everyone is doing well and that Sean is feeling better. I'm writing this after the 104th episode and Sean was feeling a little run down. I'm a nurse, medical and psychology student, and have been really enjoying listening to you two and the AKA podcast when out and about while on my runs. You were talking about different ailments, diagnoses, and let's call them bodily fluids. And you wondered what they were and why things like pus exist, as well as whether or not an appendix can actually burst. We have asked those things and I forgot. Things I ponder. Late at night. Oh, is that my appendix? Okay, so here's what I'll tell you. Let's start with the appendix, and more specifically, the infection that leads to appendicitis. Okay. When your appendix or any other part of your body becomes infected, you'll notice five main symptoms. Redness, discomfort, inflammation, a high temperature, and loss of function. If the inflammation isn't treated, it can worsen and lead to small tears in the intestinal wall, similar to when a small crack emerges in the corner of a house. It's still acceptable, but it needs to be addressed fast, unless the goal is to be able to gaze at the stars while you sleep. Mm. If left to its own devices, a tear in the intestinal wall can steadily develop and penetrate all of the layers. Infections are dangerous. Okay. I don't even know what layers are, what what exist. I always think it like, You've got your 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 skin, and then you underneath there's your skin. There's tons of layers there's, of skin. Right. There's different things, but when you get into the abdominal cavity, mm-hmm. specifically where all the organs are, mm-hmm. I always thought it was like just like an empty chamber, and stuff got like a trunk, you know, and stuff you gets put in. in there. Yeah, and stuff gets put in there. But there's like different layers and sacks, and yeah, well, to hold things separate, right, and right, to keep, keep things where they're supposed to be. Yeah, like a girdle for your myrtle, a, a girdle <laughs> for your uh, your kidney, you know, mm-hmm. keeps it in place. Mm-hmm. A little hammock for your uh, stomach. Right, right. Holds it together. Yeah, the uh, yeah the the compression sock of the intestine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it really keeps things moving. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Comparing it to the house wall once more, it started with a split in the paint layer, then the plaster, then the insulation, and finally all the way to your neighbor's kitchen. Inconvenient. The human body follows the same pattern, beginning with the top layer and gradually progressing into the muscles and then the tissues. So it's more of a subtle rip than a big old boom where your whole body shakes and you spark off a mini earthquake. (laughs) Many cells, including white blood cells, which are your body's watchdogs and combat bacteria. And of course, bacteria die during an illness. After that, all of the debris congeals into a fluid, which we call pus. As a result of that problem, the pus can enter the abdominal cavity through the damaged appendix wall, resulting in blood poisoning. Oh. Like toxic toxic shock shock syndrome. syndrome. I know this well. Sean had that once. I think we've told him the story. Yeah, we don't have to get into that. I saved his life. NBD. No No big deal. Being a nurse and a medical student in a large German city now means that we see a lot of international patients. Because I'm British, my colleagues frequently ask me to take over the translation process, oh, okay. which can be difficult when there's no one around who speaks English. Hey, governor, you got a hole in your tummy. <laughs> Germans usually are really good, but sometimes I also tend to translate sentences in a one-to-one fashion. Hmm. Obviously, when we enter a room, we will introduce ourselves before starting the poking needles and arm process. It's just good manners. Right, right. Well, I had this one colleague, a big bloke with a huge beard. You know, the one that makes you think of Hagrid straight away? I do. And all in all, a very manly person. He was pretty confident of his English speaking abilities and decided to put them to the test during his next shift. 
So armed with his injections and needles and stethoscope, he walked up to the door. Knocks, enters. Looking at the patient, he exclaims, My name is, let's just call him Hagrid. My name is Hagrid, and I will be your... He stops, looks around, sees me. What's the word for our job description again? I was in a very humorous mood that day and decided to take a leaf out of my colleague's workbook and translate the word Krankenschweister, pronounced Kragkenschwer, a star. Oh, Kragwinscher, a star. I tried making it easier for you guys. Thank you. I still probably fucked it up. To sick sister. Crank oh. equals sick. Schwester equals sister. So oh. sick sister. So Hagrid, thanking me, turns back to the room and repeats, Hi, my name is Hagrid, and I will be your sick sister for today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he quickly realized that he'd used the incorrect word, and well, needless to say, this resulted in more pranks. However, it was enjoyable while it lasted. I appreciate the confidence, and I think that's really funny. Anyways, if you ever require additional medical explanations, please contact me. I'd be delighted to pass them on, maybe with a few anecdotes thrown in for good measure. It hurts when I go like this. Is there something? No. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you. it. What about face pl- a face plant on a corpse? What? What? So what actually happened there? What? Mm. What about a face plant? I'm, please send in your stories. We are intrigued. Well, if the, I thought there was more because I can't see what you're what you're That's reading. The so end. That's the end. That's the end of it. You're leaving us a it cliffhanger. Says, Many a corpse greetings hanger. from a British German M. Oh, P.S. Millie the Mouse was my childhood email address. Isn't it supposed to be highly revealing, as Katie mentioned? Well, it has piqued my interest. Mm. I love it. Cute, cutie, cute. Well, thank you, M, for writing in. Yeah, you're gonna have to write back and let mm-hmm. us know about the face plant on yeah, a corpse. Yeah, the corpse. Did it happen to you? Did the corpse? land on you did you land on the court like, did you trip over cords that someone should have tucked back or did you I watch someone cords trip? and landed on the corpse it's a of lot course. it's a lot of alliteration one of the funniest uh like ooh, tripping situations i've been involved in is i was part i went through with uh ecads it's i-c-a-d-s in costa rica it was like a a five-week program or something we went to costa rica for like a month and learned spanish and stayed with a family and it was like a, a integrative not only cultural we had a lot of things events we had to learn about costa rican culture but we also got to like travel on the weekends for fun so it was like it was a really great it was a great experience for me we're walking along the street there's like a group of us because there are two cohorts and each cohort i think has like let's say 15 people maybe 10 so it's like small groups we know each other and we usually travel on the weekends as a group because then you can like rent a bigger place and you can share it It so much fun my friend Nina came with me from college, so I wasn't fully alone. We're walking along a street in, I think it was San Jose. It's just the city. We were in a city, probably about to catch a bus somewhere else. And we're walking along, and this guy that was on our trip with us was talking, I don't know if it was to Nina or me, but you know, we were like three in a row. And he wasn't paying attention, he was talking. And you know those, when you have a light pole or an electrical a pole, like a wood, big around, Off of them often comes these like metal things that stick out and are hooked into others almost to keep it stable. Yeah, okay, tension wire. Yeah, so you have like a metal tension wire. Well, because the wire is so thin, sometimes you don't notice it and you run right into it and lay across it like this. And that is what this guy did and he was so embarrassed and we couldn't stop laughing and forever we would just joke, we'd walk along a sidewalk and purposely run into stuff and be like, oh, you know. Let's call him, you know, Jim. We tease Jim relentlessly, and it was very funny. And whenever I see those on the street, I always think of that time. Because, you know, we didn't know each other that well. Like, it was just so funny. Yeah. (sighs) Just, you know, run right into it. Okay. Ready? Sure. Tina has sent us another letter. Hello, Tina. And it is entitled, Name Butchering and Sleep Moving. All right, Tina. What do we got? (laughs) Tina, Name Butchering. Hi, Katie, Sean, Roxy, and the OTDM community. Hi, Tina. I've been listening to the latest episodes, and in some of them, you've asked for stories of name butchering and sleepwalking or talking. So I thought I'd write in with my stories, and I'm glad that you did. First one, name misspellings. Christina is actually my middle name, but I've gone by it since forever. My first name begins with a C as well. In Norway, they typically use Ks instead of Cs. 
In fact, I believe I have yet to see a word spelled with a C. Oh, interesting. They never start with a C. Hmm. They're missing out. C's are actually more common in Sweden. Oh, than in Norway. Needless to say, my name often gets misspelled with a K, which isn't really so bad. My last name is Peterson, and it's actually a Danish last name, meaning son of Peter, or in English, son of Peter. Just different spelling, P-E-D-E-R, P-E-T-E-R. Peterson. Mm-hmm. Peterson. Mm-hmm. In Scandinavia, they would typ- typically pronounce this Pedersen. Pedersen. In the States, they would typically pronounce this Pedersen. Oh, E H N I H N. So Pedersen or Pedersen. Am I doing you any justice, Tina? Probably not. I've grown up introducing myself in Norwegian using the typical Scandinavian pronunciation. I've also grown up introducing myself in English using our family's pronunciation of Peterson. Mm -hmm. Who's a Peterson? (laughs) Oh my God, such a good show. However, in the States, the way they pronounce my last name is closer to how we pronounce it in Scandinavia. So whenever I introduced myself or needed to provide my last name verbally in English, they would always spell it P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N or P-E-T-E-R-S-E-N. So when I was talking to my undergrad, Oh, taking, sorry. When I was taking my undergrad in the States, I had to learn to alter my English pronunciation in order to avoid misspellings. Okay. Sorry. It's the end of the day for me. I'm like... I know. It's late. Um, it's interesting, things like that, because it can, the name itself can sound very common, but it can be spelled very differently. Like even I had a friend like Ashley, uh, either A-S-H-L-E-Y, or we had another girl A-S-H-L-E-I-G-H, like Lee, Ashley. It all depends. Moving on to name butchering. Yes. When I was in the 10th grade, I had a Scottish biology teacher who was also my homeroom teacher. He would normally get my name right. However, I believe in one of his other classes, he had a girl named Christiana. Christian, or Chris, Christi, Christina? Is that Christina? Do you see? Christiana? Christiana? Christ- Christiana. That's what I thought. Okay. One day we were sitting in class and although he knew at the beginning of the school year, this would have been a good deal into the year. So his knowledge of our name should have been pretty much solidified, especially since I was also in his homeroom. And for context, there are about 60 students in each grade in my school. Oh my God. It'd be a nightmare for me to learn people's names. And about 15 to 20 in each class. So not that big really. Yeah, but it's a lot of people to familiarize yourself with. But think about even in school, you get to where you know the people in your class. No. You look around and you're like, I don't really know these people. What? Do they even know me? You no. Always. Because they get called on. You yeah. know, you know your people. Don't lie to me. He was teaching us and asking questions when he got around to asking Christiana a question. I didn't respond because I wasn't aware he meant me. I was busy taking notes. And when I went quiet and I looked up, he was looking at me. I thought perhaps there was someone behind me. I checked. Nope. It was me. But just to clarify, I had to ask, oh, me? And he proceeded then to say, yes, Christiana, what is, I don't remember the question, but I still was really confused and I had to take a moment to get my answer together. Later in my undergrad in the States, I was doing a work study in the library and was being trained to do administrative work for my boss. And so I would sometimes sit at a computer outside of her office. She had hired five to six of us to do this work, but we would not usually be there at the same time. So I only knew the name of one other person. One day during my freshman year, I was at work when I heard my boss call for Emily. I looked around to see who else was within hearing range of my boss's office. No one was there. So I continued working. A couple minutes later, I heard it again. Emily. I looked around again. Still no one. I don't know why, but I assumed that perhaps she meant me. So I went into her office and it turns out that she did mean me. I don't like to correct people in authority over me. And I didn't want to upset her, but I had to let her know that I was not Emily. I tried to say something, but she continued to talk and give me my assignment, so I had to wait until she was finished. I don't like to interrupt either. Finally, I managed to speak in a word, oh, sneak in a word, and managed to slip out, oh, um, I'm sorry, but my name isn't Emily, I'm Christina. My boss looked at me and then said, oh, I'm sorry, of course, Christina. Do you think you'd be able to do that? And I guess I didn't. it didn't matter who was doing the task, so of course, I said yes. I've had that happen before. Uh, at new jobs and work where people will call me by the wrong name. When I was a waitress, some people like to, you know, be the local where they knew you. 
but I'd get called by the wrong name. Like not even close, like like not uh, Kate. Like Phil or Dave. <laughs> exactly. No, but like, I don't know, Lucy, mm. Trish, like names that are not mine at all. And I, the same thing, you're like, you don't even react because it's not you. And then they say it louder and you look around, you realize it has to be you. And then you turn them and they say it again. And you're like, but they just want to order. And you're like, just get out of here. <laughs> My name isn't Trish. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Okay. Sleep moving slash talking. In a few of the episodes, you talked about sleep moving or talking, I believe. We did. In terms of the sleep talking, it's not me, but my mom who tends to talk either when she's just drifting off to sleep or just about to wake up. So kind of in that phase. It's always so funny because I usually try to see how much of a conversation I can get in before she wakes or actually falls asleep. Sean does that sometimes to me too. Well, I want to see how, you know, how, how awake you, not awake, but how much your brain is is still engaged with the real world. Mm -hmm. So if I feed you some lines. Do I ever wake up or do I ever talk nonsense? N yeah, a little bit. You'll you'll finish a sentence, like I'll ask a question mm -hmm. and, and you'll give me a little bit of an answer. It's usually not really like well thought out. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, you're so lazy. <laughs> he recorded it one time. I know we <clears> talked <throat> about it, but it was just so funny the things that I mentioned. I'm like, what am I even doing? It doesn't even make any sense. One of the funniest was when I was watching a little bit of Fangslet E oh, yeah, which I believe one. is Norwegian for jailed abroad, which I believe is called banged up abroad in the States. Oh, haven't heard of it, but sounds amazing. My mom was starting to drift off to sleep when all of a sudden I heard, is Mulan going to war? Yes, mom. <laughs> Mulan is going to war. <laughs> it was so confused. Would you like to go? I was checking my phone. I didn't realize she was falling asleep. Quickly, I looked up the TV because I was confused as to why Mulan would be on. Maybe they were showing a promo or something. No. It was still banged up abroad on National Geographic. I looked over to her and sure enough, she was drifting off to sleep. So then I proceeded to quietly say, who is going to war? But who, it was too who, late. Who? She oh. was already asleep. Oh. Mm -hmm. A more recent funnier stories from last week. My mom was knitting and she's in the middle of creating her own pattern for a scarf and is really enjoying it. She stopped knitting and lay down on the couch to rest for a bit. She began to doze off and I was watching TV quietly. Suddenly I heard, so you just have to do a seed stitch up the seam and continue to sew it up? It was my mom drifting off to sleep. I quietly asked, what type of stitch will you do? My mom proceeded to reply, a seed stitch up the seam. And then dozed off. It See right there, and I don't mean to criticize your dream um, talking, but what you want to do is you want to introduce something completely ridiculous that's going to set her dream on You're like, well, how are you going to do that from the raft? <laughs> are you sure that the airplane is ready to go? Mm. You know, you just throw in something random, like, you know. What are we going to do with this gun? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jeez, that's pretty. No, you don't want to get that crazy and give them a nightmare. Uh, but like, uh, oh, my uh, God, we have so much banana pudding. <laughs> oh, my God, quick. The banana pudding is getting out of the machine. You know? I do love banana pudding. Yeah. Knit one, pearl two. Oh, my God, the banana pudding. <laughs> it's all over the scarf. Oh, no. <laughs> She said, it's always funny when I can get her to reply. Now, in terms of sleep moving, okay, that's more me. When I was a baby, I apparently moved around a lot in my sleep. I would kick or roll or something, or so I've been told. As I got older, this settled down. However, when I started college, I think I was fairly stressed out and I began to move more in my sleep. It's interesting how that can trigger it. One night, I went to sleep. All was well. All right. Suddenly, I woke up. And it was really early in the morning, still dark. I didn't know where I was. I didn't recognize the room I was in. I thought maybe I was home, but didn't look like home. Then it came to me. I was in the States. I was in my dorm room, but it didn't look like my dorm room. I felt around. There was a wall on the right. That was not where the wall should be. It should be on my left. I felt around some more open space on my left where the wall should be. I looked around. A glimpse of light was coming through a window on my right where there should be nothing. Suddenly, I realized what had happened. I had somehow managed to turn around in my bed so that my head was where my feet were and my feet was where my head was. Where did this walk I did that as a kid too and it is like jarring because it doesn't look, it, your first wake isn't, you're like, where the fuck am I? Like it, nothing's right, right? This happened a few more times when I was at college and also when I went home for summer. I realize this letter's gotten pretty long so I'll leave you with a few Norwegian words as always. Answers in the PS. Okay. Naven, N A V N. What do we think that means? Naven? Nothing. New. New? Okay. Number two. Oh, bibliotech. 
I think that's the library. That's the library. Biblioteca. Number three, what's the O with the slash for it? How do you think we say that? Because it's S O V N. <clears throat> Suv? Suvd? How do you do V and N together? Soven? Vn. 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 Solven. Solven. I'm okay. going to say soap. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Oh. Solvent. <laughs> Let's say shoe. We'll shoe. go totally. There you go. Next one this is like snake, but with two Ks. Snucky. Snucky. I'm going to say um, potato chip. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to say it's a snack. Mm -hmm. Five, beverage. Beverage. I'm going to say it's like a pop, like a okay. soda. All right. Let, let's hear how we did, Katie. Bring them out. Okay. How are the answers? Noven is yeah. name. Oh. Bibliotech is library. Mm -hmm. Seven, seven is sleep, as sleep. in your sleep. Yeah. Oh, in your sleep, not to sleep. Sleep would be sove, S-O-V-E, or sova. Oh, it's the act of mm -hmm. sleeping. Snake or whatever is snake is to talk. Oh. Snake, snake. Hmm. Snarky. And bevege or bavege is to move. We were way off. We got bibliotech. I'm pretty proud. It says, thanks so much for all you do. Hope, um, And I hope that you, Katie and Sean, are recovering well after your bout with COVID. Feel great. Christina. Thank you for writing in, Christina. Thank you. Do we have time for one more? How are we doing? Um, yes, we can do one more letter. And Jules, I see we have a video from you. I'm going to try to figure out how to open it. I'm not signed into my Google account. So, la, 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 la. But it's a didgeridoo. Um, thank you for saying it again. We will figure this out. Okay. Leah has written us, and it is entitled Procrastinating, Singing, and Chocolate. Okay. All of my three favorite things. It says, Hello. I had homework to do, mm -hmm. but I decided to proc procrastinate by singing and eating chocolate. Maybe. I used We'll have to read to find out. Okay. It says, Hello, everyone. I haven't had time to listen to the last couple of months because I've started a new job. Yay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Which I hate. I need to look for a new one already. Dum mm. dum. So, in good old procrastination style, I decided to binge watch the last three OTD episodes uh. and deep clean my kitchen. As to not have any time to look for new jobs. But I have something funny to share. I was mindlessly scrolling through Instagram and I stopped on a reel with the sound of Madonna's hung up. Remember I that? don't know that one. Um. Okay, well, so she's going to get into the lyrics. I was going to play it, but I'm like... And I just started laughing so hard because I realized the lyrics I was singing all these years were so incredibly wrong. She says, time goes by so slowly. Do you know, time goes by. And I sang, Temple Spice goes slowly. <laughs> mm, that makes more sense. <laughs> and also some words that aren't even words. <laughs> I haven't heard this song in ages, but why does the brain make these funny lyrics without questioning? That's hilarious. And you know the song. I don't want to play it. We can, I don't. Okay. I don't know Madonna that well. I know oh. like her stuff that was popular when I was a kid. This is like me in college or high school or oh, something. Yeah. The last one that I by. I remember she was like it was like speeding lights around her and she was all hyper. Oh, and, that's the light. Uh, that's not the and song. And it feels but, to, mm -hmm. like I just got home. No, it, and it feels like, well, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Yeah. I love these aha moments in music. It says, English is not my first language, but I think that's the reason for these funny lyric changes. That's fair. Fill in the blank, you know, let your mind just fill in the says, lyrics. Does this happen to native speakers too, or am I just a funny kind of weird in multiple languages? No, it happens to us too. I never know what someone's singing in a song. It's very indecipherable. And to the point where, so when I was younger, Pearl Jam, I, I was only a fan of maybe one or two of their albums, like a big mm -hmm. fan, but their first song or their first album had a hit on it and it was so hard to understand what eddie better was singing like yeah well his mumbles. voice is so yeah and there's some people who are super clear that's why i like kanye west rapping and mm -hmm. um Nas and there's a lot of people who i think do a good job where you can actually hear the lyrics like run dmc is another good one but you can really hear when they when they rap you can pick it up the lyrics and also singing and other song you know eddie better stuff like that um I think we just try to make sense out of it. Yeah, I had no idea what he was singing on that album. And so much like, like hold when me, I was like, Hold Me Closer, Tony Danza. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a Mondegreen, right? A, more than a Mondegreen, though. I think that a Mondegreen is a one-time 
Oh, yeah. But if, yeah. You, if you flub the whole song. Yeah. Or if you just make up words, which my friend Jamie used to do when uh, I remember it specifically. This happened a lot. But I remember it specifically to Will Smith's Welcome to Miami. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because it was in Spanish and she did not speak Spanish. But he'd be like, Welcome to Miami. You know, and it was like, Welcome to Miami in Spanish. Buenvenue. Uh, Buenvenu a mi Miami, I think is how it is. Anyway, it's in Spanish, and she didn't speak Spanish, so she said, boom, ba-do, ba Miami. Like, she's made up things. Like, it was just sounds. Like, it wasn't even a word. <laughs> I'm sure everyone does and this. And we were singing in the car, and I was like, what? Like, <laughs> mm. and she's like, it's just boom, ba da ba mi And I was like, it's actually Spanish. <laughs> Close, but no. Okay. Moving on to the chocolate topic. Okay, chocolate. Topic, chocolate. Love that stuff. You and me both. I'm from Cologne in Germany, and we have a chocolate museum in town from Lint. We got to go. In town from Lint. I don't understand what you just said. They have a chocolate museum yes. in their town. Yes. From Lint. Lint Chocolates. Oh, that's the brand. Lint. The, yeah, L-I-N-D-T. Lint. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. And they make those little chocolate hazelnut filled things over the winter I was a little time. concerned because I heard chocolate oh, in lint in lint and lint. I was like L-I-N-D-T. that's disgusting <laughs> to the factory workers I put it in their pockets like a little bit of lint <laughs> my... don't throw that lint away from the dryer what we do in Cologne Germany we is roll. we roll it so it's like you, you get this um like fresh laundry sometimes the beach you know like a little smell <laughs> a hint of and then you get to the chocolate fur, and, then... and then but like you know the chocolate that you, you can't just eat it all at once because it's caught in the lint so you kind of have to suck on the lint <laughs> Gross. okay okay let's move on from the, the germans they're very good with chocolate i like that that's the way you thought of i hate museums but in this one is a giant chocolate fountain and you get a little cookie that they dip in the fountain and oh my god many moons ago when i was little you were allowed to dip it yourself but covid and health restrictions yeah, yeah. have banned that that one kid fell in. You never saw him again. He floated away down the Willy Wonka. Still Charlie and the Chocolate Factory uh, vibes. <laughs> right. <laughs> if anyone is traveling here, it's a good place to be. I also just realized it's not giant, but when I when I was little, it was. Things always change size when you're a kid. I used to love Grandma's Cookies. It's a brand of cookie you can get at like a Seven Eleven or any stop and go. And when I was a kid, I thought they were huge, and I was like, Oh my God, they're so big, and you get two. So I'd always instead of getting a candy bar, so I'd be like. I want chocolate chip grandma's cookies. Sometimes double chocolate depends on how I felt. And then it's funny because like, I don't know, you're a teenager. You don't really buy that stuff anymore. I don't know. Go to college. One time on a road trip with Nina out to Arizona to stay at her Mima's house, we stop and I'm like, I'm going to get a grandma's cookie. And those things are so fucking small. I was like, rip off. You made me think of something I'd love for people to write in to mm. otdmpod at gmail.com. What do you call your grandparents? Because every, mm. every culture seems to have their own little take on it. French people, German people. Yeah, or people in your family, like, do you have funny little names? Well, I'm more curious about mm. what you call your your relatives. Like Mima? Yeah, exactly. Nina calls her grandma Mimi, Mima. Pippi, mm-hmm. you know. You do Mimi, Pippi, I do Grandma, Papa. Pop, pop. Papa, P-A-P-A. Well, pop, pop. I know, I need to like pronunci- or, like enunciate more clearly. Because someone uh, from our community was so kind to tell me when I talk about autism, I say stemming, which sounds like S-T-E-M, like a stem. But stem, stemming, S-T-I-M-M, is actually what it's called. And mm-hmm. it's just a behavior that people who have aut- autism can do where it's like the repetitive things. Like it can be like rocking or moving. It's a soothing movement. Anyway. Well, I'm not going to criticize you on enunciation. <laughs> but um, well thank you yeah. i do my best but it was helpful that she told me and i'm like oh I'll, I'll be more conscious of that so that people don't get confused right you know i'm trying to educate i want people to know it's stemming mm-hmm. it's even just hard for me to say that way stim stim steam it comes with a whole different sound <laughs> steaming okay We're, oh so yeah right in with your mima papa Nana, grandma, whatever you call them. Bippity I'm curious. Boop. You know, different parts of the world. Yeah, we may have some some outliers. You're like, what? You call them what? Have we asked them for nicknames as well? Because my family's a heck on nicknames. Most of my dad's friends, when he passed away and I went to the funeral, I didn't know them by their real names. And I didn't want to just because their nicknames could be things like horseshit or bobo or bozo or. If you send in your nickname, mm-hmm. be sure to tell us the origin story mm-hmm. though. Don't just leave us hanging. 
and I can explain some of those and why. I mean, I think I told him why I'm called Stomper, but maybe I haven't. And I Nick and my brother's called Hawkeye. I can tell you some stories. Okay, back to this letter. Okay. So hates museums, blah, blah, blah. Um, I also just realized it's not that giant. Okay, it was when I was little. They sell the lint chocolate in the US too if you have a chance to give it a try. I have and it's delicious. And it usually, I feel like I get it around holiday times. And especially when I worked in an office, someone would bring in one of those like Christmas trees of it. And you just like slowly work your way through. Mm. That's it for me. I'm going to keep procrastinating somewhere else now. <laughs> Lots of love, Leah. Well, Leah. Oh, this is the lint. Oh, magic. That's the fountain. That is the fountain of youth. Look at that. The chocolate. They take the the brown water from the river. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) It's a chocolate. Is that a photo that you're going to send to me? It's in the email. Email. Okay. Gotcha. It's a screen grab. She's so we could see. Like a fondue, a chocolate fondue. But it's fancy. So bougie. Mm. Ooh. Thank you, Leah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Uh, We have to go because it's time to eat dinner. We love you all. Thank you so much for sharing the podcast, for writing reviews, for sending in your letters. I really look forward to this every week. Well, I do too. And I appreciate everyone who's stopping by and Mm -hmm. leaving comments. And um, we'll be back again next week. I'll be back. And we'll be 100%. We'll be uh, filming during the day. Daytime. Daytime. Regular time. (laughs) Yep, yeah. Daytime, Katie. All right. I think I hear the the, the theme song is is playing. If you listen real close, it's... Here we go. We're out of here. We're all about to be up out of this place. Uh, I feel like I need some like closing, like that's it, Cleveland or something, you know. (laughs) Okay. Have a good weekend. We love you. Bye. Bye.